In September 2022, a cool video was released on YouTube called 20 Mechanical Principles Combined in a Useless Lego Machine. I highly recommend that you check it out. One of the concepts shown is something called a Schmidt coupling. And a Schmidt coupling allows you to transmit torque between two parallel offset shafts. Now, here's the neat thing. Those shafts can have an extreme distance between them, but the distance can also be variable and it will transmit the torque at a constant velocity. I'm going to show you how it works. I decided to simulate it in Creo Parametric and then show you how you can build it in Creo for yourself. So here I have an assembly open. I have an input shaft and this is the one that's going to be driven in my mechanism analysis. And then we have a bunch of links. There are a total of six links, three that connect the input shaft to an intermediate disc. Here is the intermediate disc and then three that connect the intermediate disc to the output shaft and the output shaft is here and it is located using this holder. This is just so that I can change the location of the output shaft. But anyhow, let's take a look at how this works in mechanism mode. Let's go to applications and then mechanism. And I already have a motor and an analysis set up in here. I will repeat that later on, but let me go to my analysis and then hit the run button. And so there it is calculating. It went by very quickly. Let's expand the playbacks in the mechanism tree. Now go to the playback and hit the play button. And that way I will be able to show it to you at a much slower speed. So we have the input shaft on the left rotating using a pin connection and that is causing the links and the intermediate disc to rotate the output shaft. So that's all well and good, but let's see how we can change the location of the output shaft. I will go to this output holder in my model tree. Let's use the edit definition button and I'm going to get rid of one of the initial constraints that I had in there and that way I can grab it and then change its location. Let's move it down even a little bit more and then so that it does not move when I run the mechanism I'm going to throw in a fixed constraint. Let's hit the check mark over here and you'll notice that the position's updated. I will use the right mouse button to regenerate everything to make sure everything's in the right position. Now let's go back to the analysis and hit the green flag. Yes, I'm going to overwrite the previous results and it still runs. Let's go to the playbacks once more and let's hit the play button. And again, just so that you can see it move a little bit slower and There it goes. Let me close out of here and I'm going to change the location of the output holder one more time so you can see how it adjusts. Let's get rid of the fixed constraint and then move it over here and move it up and move it over once again and lock it back down with a fixed constraint again. Hit the check mark. Everything adjusts and run the analysis again. Yes, let's overwrite. And let's go to the playbacks and move it at a speed that you can see what's going on. So again, just really, really neat stuff. That is great. Let me stop the playback, close out of the dialog box, close out of here. No, I'm not going to save the results. Let me show you how you can do this for yourself. And so let's take a look at the intermediate disc. I will open it up in its own separate window. It's a very simple part. I have a sketch, which is basically your three different arms located at 120 degrees. And then I have that extruded to a thickness. And then there is a hole at the same distance along each of the three arms. That's all that you need in the intermediate disc. Let's go back to the original window. And for the input and the output shaft, I just took that original disc 
and then I just added a, another extrude to it and then put in a pattern of splines, those little cuts that you see on the shaft, just so that you'd be able to see the motion of the input and the output shaft. Yes, I would really have those different spline cuts in an actual real world me uh, mechanism. And I also added color to one of the surfaces just so that it would be easier to see as I am running the playback. So again, very simple stuff. Let's go take a look at the other important component in here, which is the link. Let me hit the open button. And hey, this is about as simple as you can get in a part. I could have done this with a single extrude, but I did it with an extrude and a couple of different holes. And initially, I made these links the same length as one of the arms in the disc or the input output shaft, but you can actually change the length of the different links and it'll update. Hey, let's take a look at that. Let me go to the sketch and I'm going to use the edit dimensions icon and let's change this from a value of 50. Let's change this up to a value of 80 and then let's get out of here. I'm just going to hit the regenerate button and close out and then, whoa boy, let's regenerate once more and so everything updates. Let's jump into mechanism mode and then let's rerun the analysis using the flag and it still works. Let's go to the playback so you can see that at a little slower speed. And again, it looks quite weird at this uh, configuration, but again, it still works. And again, we can play around with the location of the output shaft. Let me go to the output holder and then edit definition and get rid of my fixed constraint. And let's move it way over here. Let's get some really extreme distance between everything. I, mean, I hope I'm not making these too far apart. Let me then fix this. If I made these too far apart, it would not reconnect. It looks like it did. And again, we can go to the analyses and use the green flag to run and overwrite the previous results. And again, you have just an extreme distance between the input and output shafts. Let me play this one once more and then we'll take a look at how you can build this for yourself. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, close out of there, close out of here. So I am assuming that you can create the simple disks and links yourself. Now let's create an assembly in order to put these together. Let's go to the new icon and I'm going to create an assembly and I'm gonna call this my Schmidt coupling and then hit the OK button. And my new assembly is started out. Let me turn on the display of datum planes and axes. I'm gonna use that in a moment. Okay, and the first thing that I am going to do in here is create an axis, and I'm only using that axis in order to have a reference for the pin connection for the input shaft. Let's create an axis, and I'm going to do it at the intersection of this datum plane. Hold down the control key and select that datum plane. And so I can keep track of everything. Let's call this the input axis and hit the enter key. And then click the OK button. So there I have my first one located in here. Now let's bring in the very first component. I will click on the assemble icon and let's grab that input component and let me move it out away from my references. Actually, let me turn off my plane display for a moment and let me make sure, let me go to my layers, make sure that the axes for this component are displayed just because I need those and let's close my layers. Okay, so now let me Create a pin connection. I will go to the dashboard and go to the drop down list. Let's change the connection type to a pin connection. And I will select that axis that I just created. And let's pick the axis going down the middle of my part. 
And so that's part of the pin connection. And then to eliminate translation, I'm going to use the datum plane called front. I happen to know it's a datum plane called front. And then let's also just grab the datum plane called front out of the part. I could have turned on their display, but I was just easy on myself since I knew which references that I wanted to use. The connection definition is complete. That looks good. Let's hit the OK button. So now I have my first component in here with a rotational degree of freedom. Next, I'm going to bring in the holder for the output shaft. I'm just going to put that in here right at the beginning uh, just so that later on I will be able to use it as a reference when I locate the output shaft. So let's hit the assemble button and what did I call that? The output holder. Here it is. And for this one, I'm going to put in a distance constraint from here and I'm going to pick the back surface there. Let's use a distance of 50. Later on, I'm going to use a cylinder connection between my output shaft and this component. So the actual distance doesn't matter, but I don't want this thing to rotate. Let's also do a parallel constraint between ASM top. I'm going to pick this flat surface in the part. Oh, turned it upside down. Let's use the flip button. And then I'm just going to eyeball it over here somewhere, maybe about that location. Once again, I'm just going to use the fixed constraint because I don't care about the exact distance or offset between the input shaft and the output shaft. So that is good. Let us hit the check mark for that one. And let me use my model tree in order to hide some of the different default datums. Now I will bring in my first reference for bring, bring in the first link that will go to the intermediate shaft. Let's hit the assemble button and I'm going to grab one of my links and this one is going to have a pin connection. So let's choose pin and I'm going to pick this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface and then let's pick this flat surface and I will query select to the flat surface on the other side. So that is good for this component. Let's hit the check mark. And so to get the two other links in there, hey, let's take advantage of the repeat command. I will right click on it in the model tree and then choose repeat. And the only reference that I want to change is the first coincident reference because I'm going to use the same coincident constraint for the flat planar surfaces. So let's choose add and then I can pick this cylindrical surface and then let me grab this cylindrical surface. And so there's a bit of overlap in between them right now. Let me click the OK button just to eliminate that overlap. Hey, let's go modify the length of the disk back to its original length. Let me change this from 80 back to what I had before. Let's change that to a 50 and let me hit the regenerate button there. Now you can see that I have the disks and they're not overlapping. All right, that's great. Now let's bring in the intermediate disk. Let's hit the assemble button and let's grab the disk. And again, this is the one that's just got the three arms, but I don't have the additional shaft with the splines. And I'm going to put in a pin connection. Let's do a pin and I will pick this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface and then this flat surface and let me query select to the flat surface on the back. If you're not familiar with query select, that's just where you're tapping the right mouse button to get the correct reference. Now I need to connect this intermediate disk with the other two links. So I'm going to choose a new set and let's change the type from pin to cylinder just because the first pin connection is going to eliminate translation, so I don't have to go overkill and pick the flat surfaces. Let me rotate and get that surface there. Connection definition is complete. And then let's do the other cylinder connection. Let's do a new set. And this one is cylinder. And pick this one. And then rotate. 
and pick this surface over there. The position updates. So now I have the three links connecting the input shaft to my intermediate disk. This is great. Let's hit the check mark for this one. And now let's repeat the link connection again. Let's select it, right mouse click, and oh, not seeing repeating there. Sometimes it's easier to pick just out of the model tree. Okay, here's the repeat command. And let's pick both references this time and choose the add button. And so then I'm going to pick this cylindrical surface, this flat surface. Hey, if you're not familiar with the repeat command, I've got a video on the repeat command. Check it out. And so this cylindrical surface, that flat surface there, and then this cylindrical surface, that flat surface, and then click the OK button. All right, so now I have got my total of six links in the model. Let me turn off my axis display. I really don't need it. I don't think I need my plane display anymore either. And now let's assemble in the output shaft. And I'm going to use the same part that I use for the input shaft. And so right now, since I have a config option that allows me to reuse constraints that were used the first time a component was assembled, I need to turn off the by interface option. And so let's see, what do I want for this one? Let me remove the references and I want to rotate this around. And so let's see, I do want a pin connection and let's see, I want a pin connection between that and that. And then for the translation, let me pick that surface there and oops, you know what? It is using a different surface from the input that I want to use. Let me choose. Ah, I don't know what I use there. Let me pick there. There we go. There I have my first pin connection. Now I'm going to add a few new cylinder connections. Let's do a new set. And this one is going to be a cylinder connection. Let me connect this cylindrical surface. Oh boy, it's going to be, where am I? Where is that surface there? Ah, it's a little weird rotating. Okay. So that's good for that cylinder connection. And then I need to do this other link. So let me scroll down and do new set. And I'll pick this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface. And that adjusts. And now I just have one more cylinder connection to create. And that will put the output shaft connected to the holder that I have over here. So let's scroll down in here and do another set. And it is a cylinder connection. And it's this surface and then this surface here. And the mechanism adjusts in order to locate everything together in there. Now I will hit the check mark. And let's throw in a motor and then run an analysis of this. So let's go to Applications, Mechanism. And I've got my different joint connections in here. And let's see, I want to put on to this joint connection, the very first one, a servo motor. I can get to that from the mini toolbar. And I'm going to define the angular velocity. Let's go to the profile details. I'm just going to do a constant velocity. Let's do 90 degrees per second and then hit the check mark. And so now I have everything that I need in order to run an analysis of my Schmidt coupling. Let's go to the analyses command. I will use the little star from the mini toolbar. And I'm going to change this to a kinematic analysis. Earlier in the video, I noticed that my initial model had this as a position analysis. It'll still work, but I always prefer the true kinematic solver whenever I can. And let's have this do four rotations. So I'll choose 16 seconds. Now let's crank up the frame rate just so that my output will be a little smoother. If I go to the motors tab, the same motor will be running from beginning to end. And I'll just use whatever the current initial configuration is. 
and then I can click on the run button and it's generating the motion and then click OK out of here and then we can go to the playbacks and then play that in order to see it at a bit of a slower speed you can see how it is moving and again the cool thing is if I change the location of the output shaft then the mechanism is going to update and it's still going to transmit that torque at the constant velocity so again that is a Schmidt coupling check it out neat stuff Play around with it.